I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delighted to introduce you to a wonderful author. His name is Reverend George Ioma, and he has written a book that you will just love. It is called Teachers for Life. This thought-provoking book goes beyond the confines of traditional classrooms, exploring the enduring impact educators have on their students. The author introduces us to two teachers who, having left their formal roles, embark on a journey to reconnect with their past students. This poignant book reveals how the influence of dedicated teachers shapes not only the minds, but also the hearts of their students, leaving a lasting legacy that extends far beyond their school years. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight, and we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Reverend, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Good afternoon. I think it's probably early early afternoon for you. It's it's late evening for us here already, uh, and uh, and it's just so great to be able to talk to you about this book today. Well, it's great to have you on. I love the book. Tell us what the inspiration was for Teachers for Life. Uh, I I think just that you know you talk we talk about teachers. We we know we've encountered teachers at various points in our lives. And, and we also know the impact that those teachers have on us. Uh, what is interesting is, of course, teachers are always going to be there, whether they're in the classroom or at home or, or thinking of, of going into the profession itself. Teachers are always going to be part of our lives. So to be able to actually pick up on a subject that is already familiar to so many of us, and I should say to all of us, and then to pin pinpoint two two characters out of that and and be able to focus on their lives uh, the only thing i regret about is that i write about them when they're no longer with us but i, I suppose mm. i suppose if they were around they they would like to to read a book about them and think i didn't know i had so much influence on you but they do have influence on us wonderful Tell us a little bit about the journey of the two educators in your book and how they go about reconnecting with their former students. Yes, uh, I, I, I write about uh, an old gentleman, uh, and I, I, will, I will remember him as he was. He was an elderly gentleman. Uh, he had been in, in the town where I am here in the northwest of England for many, many years. And I think that was part of his attraction in talking to him is that wherever I turned to talk to him, he would introduce me to somebody else who he remembered from his early days in school. So, so actually to be able to have, have lived and worked and connected with so many people in the same place and yet not to run away in retirement. I think some of us would like to run away mm. from where we worked in order to have some peace and quiet. He wasn't interested in that. Mm. Similarly, of course, with, with uh, Mrs. Uh, Audrey Doyle, who I worked very closely with because I was her minister. She was my church secretary and also a member. Mm. Uh, her wealth of, of knowledge and information was, was, was incredible. And I considered myself lucky enough to, to have come within her peripheral view, but more than that, to actually have worked with her. So, so these two teachers think that their influence on me, for that matter, was as important and as major as the influence they had on their own students over the years. Students who continue to live exactly where they were, but students who are no longer students. They're, they were going on to be grandparents, <laughs> and and their children had been had been subsequently taught by these two people, and it was later on that their own grandchildren also going through their learning experience and being introduced to the person who taught their their parents and grandparents. Mm -hmm. I think that is incredible to be able to to fit all of that in this one life lifestyle in the same place. Amazing. Yeah, it is an amazing story and an amazing journey. Your book underscores the fact that a teacher's influence extends far beyond the classroom. Do you think this concept will impact current educators and their approach to teaching? I, I would like to think that when people choose to go into the profession itself, uh, to go into teaching, they're not choosing it because it's of its lucrative nature. They're choosing it because they know that right from the beginning, 
they're going to they're going to start impacting on lives and because they are going to impact on lives those lives are going to impact on them as well subsequently and i i think that actually teaching itself therefore provides opportunity to a two way opportunity to grow you grow as you as you teach you grow as you are being taught and as you learn and i think that if if this book was to reach somebody who is new to the profession and and is having any doubt about it uh, they might think actually <laughs> i will reconsider my doubt and stick to teaching because <laughs> i have something that will carry me throughout my life but also for anybody who is thinking of going into the teaching profession itself to realize that many many years and long after you are gone there will be those who want to remember you and talk about you and and in ways that you probably never got a chance to hear i think teaching is an amazing route to take yeah. in life and and many of us of course don't end up being professional teachers but we end up in teaching capacities where we pass the knowledge we you know absorbed into other 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 younger people generations that come after us yeah it's very very true it's nice to leave that legacy for sure in fact i've had people come up to me or write to me and they're like i was an intern when you were working at this tv station and you were incredibly kind and you explained this and that and my whole career i've thought about the lessons you've taught me yeah. and i can barely remember who the person was but I was just a giving person that if I saw somebody who needed help, I showed them how to do it. This is how yeah. it's done. So uh, teachers do have that impact and it is a wonderful feeling when you do find I, out I, later I on. Need, I need, of course, to say that teaching is not an easy profession to choose. I don't know about teachers in America, but teachers in the UK and in Britain, uh, I encounter a lot of teachers. I'm a governor at a, at a, at a local high school where I live. Mm -hmm. And and I'm always staggered by the stories you hear. Not everyone in a classroom wants to learn. To learn, it's it's a shocking reality that that a teacher is surrounded by people who they they should hope are eager to be there, but discover that actually they are not always there <laughs> to to want to learn. And certainly not they don't want to learn from you. Thank you very much. Yeah, some <laughs> so, kids so are I, just I, there I, to be disruptive. Yeah. Some kids are there because they're yeah. entertaining the other kids around them. Mm. I mean, guilty as charged from time to time. Unfortunately, I was not a straight A student. I'm sure, I'm sure I wasn't a perfect student <laughs> in my early days. I, I, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, if you go back now with our mature brains on it, we'd be like, mm. I can't believe what a jerk I was when I was 12 yeah. years old, but yeah. when I was 12 years old, saying funny things to the whole class and making them laugh uh, was more important than learning my uh, geometry or something like that. So <laughs> for sure. That's true. That's true. <laughs> is, tell me a little bit about your writing career. Is this the first book you've written? Are you a, a writer in, in trade? I, I, I would like to assume that, that when you're published, that, that is the first book you've ever written. I think the story of writers is that the first book that is published is not always the one they've ever, that they first took the pen to write. And I, I have this burning, I've had it for years and years to actually just step out and write. And I think it comes out of wanting to be a storyteller, to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And and the older we get, I think, the more we accumulate enough within us to want to sort of feed back. Mm -hmm. And and if it can be fed back in some coherent form, I think that, that, that might make for something that is worth picking up and reading or, or talking about. Yeah. So my, my writing career, uh, uh, I'm a Baptist minister, so, so generally Baptist ministers, I think, and, and all probably ministers are already writers in one way or another. You have to write sermons every Sunday that you hope is going to capture people's imagination. If it doesn't inspire them, at least you end up having said something that they'll go away thinking, I hadn't thought of that or I hadn't seen that that, that way. So, so I think in going back years, I, I'm just a writer because it's part of what I do. Mm -hmm. I have to pick up and write those sermons, forget about the quality of their delivery. They, they, they are written and they are recorded. And I sometimes try to convince myself that many, many years long after I'm gone and some people are beginning to wonder if I existed at all, somebody might come across one of the lousy sermons I preached <laughs> Or, or wrote, and they'll think, actually, he had something to say. I, I wish we had listened then. 
so so writing is there but i think when when one picks up a pen or or, or not a, a typewriter a computer and and you want to put an account uh, that you you would hope somebody in the end publishes mm. that it's 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 it if it was the first it is the first of many mm. if 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 it is a follow up then at least is it building on something you've already done and i had already done something but it was much more substantive uh, full of full of my sort of uh, inner uh, wrestlings uh, but I, I thought that if i had to put something of a tome in front of a publisher and say to them now take this publish it they're more likely to look at me and say you're kidding i have no idea what you're on about uh, then it dawned on me that actually the, the the best way to be published and so i think of this book as as the as the way to be published write a short book talk mm. about something everybody probably identify with make it slick and put it out and see if it gets published and it it was <laughs> the, the, the person who was more surprised about having this book published wasn't the publisher themselves that they did it. It was me that they thought they should take this. But I, I really enjoyed putting something out that uh, that, uh, that my publisher thought was worth putting out, and and I'm hoping that I could build on that going forward. Anyway, absolutely. And you are being a member of the clergy, a storyteller, a writer, and also a teacher. I mean, Jesus was a teacher, right? Well, if Jesus was was nothing else to to many people, he was an amazing teacher. Yeah. For those for those, and there will be millions and millions of people who say, "No, Jesus is not for me." And 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 we agree that that is not always going to be the case. That Jesus is for all, but but his teaching alone is well worth taking note of and 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 you know thinking about. Because some of his teachings have influenced the way we work, the way we we deal with people. Yeah. Uh, I, I always think about that golden rule: "Do unto others as you would have them do unto you." Uh, it wasn't a clever person who came up with that. That was something that Jesus put out for us to try and live up to. Yeah. So, so being a teacher, being a storyteller, being somebody who just wants to connect with people, I think is is the heart of of all of this in my mind. Absolutely. And to paraphrase a saying I've heard many, many times, they say about Jesus, of all the armies that ever marched, of all the navies that ever sailed, of all the kings that ever reigned, no man has touched more lives than the Lord Jesus Christ. So whether you believe he's the son of God or not, he certainly was an impactful teacher. It doesn't matter that whether whether people believe Jesus is the son of God or not, uh, his, his impact is here. Yeah. And and I think you know he died when he was thirty three. I am fifty three now. Yeah. He, the good Lord had died twenty years uh, uh, earlier than I have had a chance to live so far. But to think that he was thirty three, I am fifty three. I have left. I've had no impact on anyone. <laughs> I'm sure that's not. absolutely not true. <laughs> so, for somebody to have lived, uh, for Jesus to have lived until he was 33, having the impact he has had on all of us, by Jove, we need to stop and sometimes just bow, just bow. Well, that's a great point. And no doubt you are an impactful speaker and thinker because that is a thought that I will carry with me today. My son is 34 years old, so yeah. I'll start comparing him to Jesus and see if he measures up. <laughs> Reverend yeah. George Ayoma has written a wonderful book. It is called Teachers for Life. It's a thought-provoking book. It goes beyond the traditional classroom and explores the enduring legacy of educators. It's a wonderful read. We are all teachers in our own right, whether we're a parent, whether we're a teacher outright, whether we're a boss and a mentor, um, whether you're a member of the clergy, we all have words of wisdom to share. And uh, this book gives the appreciation that these teachers deserve front and center. Reverend, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Logan, I've enjoyed talking to you. Have a great afternoon and take care. I enjoyed talking to you as well. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.